Hello, friends and family. There's another episode of the Pull Up Trey podcast. I am Trey. This is Samson. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing good. You're so much more to the point than I am. My introductions are like, I don't know if they go less than 25 seconds, and you did it in like four or five. There's something There's something to be said there, I think. I, I think that's my lack of talent and skill. <laughs> no, I, I think it, it probably goes the other way. You know, it's like the, the term special simple, mm. the ability to convey something complex, something special in a simple, digestible manner. And here I am being uh, the inverse of laconic and even <laughs> using that term now is certainly not laconic. Um, Trey, we're here to discuss stat lines. We're a little, little data boys this um, this week, I guess. I, to, to the people listening, if this seems, if there's a chance that anything that you hear is dated, it's because there's a potential that it might be. I'm going out of the country for a little while where I won't be podcasting, so we're banking a few podcasts. And uh, in this one, we're talking about stat line predictions on a, a few different players. We're not just going to be saying the numbers. We're going to give the reasoning on why we think a, a player might play this many minutes, take this many threes, et cetera, et cetera. Trey, have you ever done anything like this? I know people do like the over under stuff, but yeah. as far as about thinking of in basketball in these terms, like as a kid, did you ever do this? Well, I think I do it to, we did it with Jason Tatum last, last summer. <laughs> like we, I think the best thing about like the off season is that everything is like, there's infinite possibilities. You can talk yourself into this role player taking this step because this move happened and that stat line is going is going to jump. And then like the first 10 games of the season, like you either feel like you are Nostradamus or like the biggest idiot. Like anyone last season that said this is OG season, he's taking a leap. The first 20 games this you saw all star and you felt amazing with that prediction. Did, did it turn out well at the end? Like it went OK, but Predictions are fun. I, I had this fun piece called OG Ananobi is a Rorschach test where we were kind of writing about we. I was writing about the, I don't know, the disparate views and the divergent views on, you know, an average OG Ananobi play. Like the people who see something and start mining that for like, well, he created this advantage, which means in the future he can dependably create that advantage. So even though on this particular play, he ended up falling over at least he got the step on the guy and so like if you can get a step on a guy that's good you can kind of scale up but most people wouldn't assume that the falls scale up with it regardless og yeah he's he's had an up and down attempt at scaling his game up i would say we're not here to talk about og really only his usage percentage um let's start with scotty barnes first i think that's the player most raptors fans are interested in um, I think that he is, you know, primed to take a leap of sorts. And while I think I'm looking most forward to if he's playing on a top five defense, if he makes that big leap defensively, I think would be the most important one for his game. But we'll start with points, rebounds, and assists. Scotty Barnes, what does he end up with for you? Where do you think he's at? So for me, I, I'm not expecting a big... Um, scoring leap just because of the limitations they have offensively uh, construction wise but I'm predicting 17 points seven rebounds and and six assists this season biggest reasoning for for just a two-point jump is obviously with the lack of spacing that they have with Jakob and and I mean, I'm assuming Pascal is on the team when making these predictions um what Sky does best is get to the rim um utilizing his strength that becomes a lot harder with people being planted within the paint simply because the raptors can't shoot while i do expect him to score more just because although the the numbers didn't support fred not being on the court and him taking more shots fred is not playing is playing zero of 48 minutes now so he is forced to to take more shots he's one of the few guys who can create a shot to some degree so I'm expecting him to take more shots and thus scoring more points. And from a playmaking standpoint, I'm expecting the the boost to go up to 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 six to seven assists simply because I expect Darko to have him man a bench lineup, and I also expect him to just get more opportunity 
initiating the offense, whether that's working off Jakob, whether that's working off Pascal, and thus getting more opportunities to, to create more assists. So I think big wins for him would be, like you said, improving as a defender. The Raptors, if they're going to win games with this team, are going to have to be not just a good defense, an elite defense, if they want to make the playoffs. And him living up to that reputation from um, FSU would be a massive win. So I'm expecting him to improve more so as a defender simply because he'll have a year of elite rim protection behind him finally. And also just simply because the the lack of opportunities I, I see for him offensively. We see it pretty similarly on offense. Yeah. My predictions were 17.7 points. I went to the decimals. I don't know if you – it doesn't matter, yeah, really. 17.7, yeah. eight boards, six assists. I do think that the rebounds will go up just a little bit um, because I think that Pirtle will end up being kind of like in that Stephen Adams, Kim Birch style where, like, yes, he grabs rebounds, but the boxing out is going to allow for more of that. And I expect the Raptors kind of to tip towards, like, the Westbrook – um aspect of things where you go. want the guy bringing the ball of the floor to get the rebound so if you're clearing out that guy goes to pursue it on long ball situations long rebound situations um 17.7 points would be i think like a, a pretty big jump especially for a guy who went from i think he was 15.4 both in his rookie season and his sophomore year he ended up taking more shots last season than he did the year prior he was less efficient that is the result of being pushed behind the line for some more attempts, which isn't his strength, and also a lack of spacing. There was less shooting on this year's Raptors, less healthy shooting on this year's Raptors team than there was the year before. There wasn't a big jump from anybody in the first half of the season when you know Pascal was injured for however many games, and Fred was shooting like 44% from three, 39% on his pull-ups, 50% on his catch-and-shoot stuff. Um, they're playing OG, they're playing Gary, they're playing Precious. Like there's a decent amount of space out there. And Scotty had a little bit more room to run in transition. He surprised people with how effective he was as an offensive rebounder. I don't think it'll be as friendly, but if Scotty isn't taking over 15 shots a game, then I think Scotty probably has to look inward and say, I'm not being aggressive enough, even if the the context isn't perfect for him. But he took like 13.2 field goal attempts per game last season. You got to get north of 15. And considering like he'll draw some fouls, I'm sure he's going to hit a decent amount of shots. I think 17.5, 18 point range for a guy who's taking 15 shots per. I think that he can get there. The jump from 3.5 assists to 4.8 assists per game last season was his biggest developmental jump. His assist percentage went from like 13% to 20 percent so it's not just that he took a bunch more possessions but it's that he was a better passer in those possessions and he put guys in really advanced advantageous positions if you want to read about that specifically i have a piece on that um just the playmaking and the 4.8 to 6 is a really really big jump i know it sounds like it's not that much but a lot of guys end up in that like 3 to 4.5 with me like medium volume it's pretty hard to get north of six and then keep climbing, especially if you're not like a heliocentric player. Um, six assists might not sound like big, 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 and it might not say to you that this is one of the best playmakers in the league um, or passers in the league. But I think six assists playing the style that whatever it looks like next year, I think it will be a very interesting play style. And I think six assists would be really great. Um, I'll hit it home again. The defense with... OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, Jakob Pertl playing next to him for a ton of minutes. He should be able to kind of lean into the freelance defense stuff that he likes, and he should also be able to be a little bit more aggressive, protected by rotational length, and as you said, an elite um, rim presence. All that stuff should mean that he can lean into some of the gamble stuff that he likes, that he can float a little bit more, and you can see if some of that defensive playmaking can connect a little bit more yeah. substantially. It should be really exciting. Uh, not everything is perfect about this team, but Scotty Barnes, if you're going to hitch your wagon to somebody to have like a big, big leap next year, 
he's the guy and um the proof will be in the pudding i hope that it's the best type of pudding what's the best type of pudding by the way thoughts chocolate e- easy what about butter scotty barnes are you 57 <laughs> hey bro hey um but no seriously butterscotch is pretty fire like do you eat like um like raisin cookies i hate raisins do you eat oatmeal cookies i feel like that goes hand to hand too i don't i don't like oatmeal that much i wish i did because um, if you like oatmeal, you can get, you can like have such healthy breakfasts that are so good for you and fill you up. Um, I, I don't think I've ever told you this. Since January first, I've eaten oatmeal for breakfast almost every single day. Jesus, <laughs> you're you impress me. Just as like a, you're a good man, you're very intelligent. I enjoy you, and you're very talented in many things. I think you're great, but I'm very impressed at that willpower to eat oatmeal yeah. every morning. I, I I think it tastes good. Do you put brown sugar on it? Yeah. Okay. All right. But still, ooh, that's, I couldn't. Mind you, I don't eat breakfast that much. If anybody's listening and thinking, why doesn't this guy eat breakfast? I'm sorry. I'm a writer. <laughs> you know, I have a strange, anyway. Okay. Pudding is good. Chocolate pudding is fire. Agreed. Pascal Siakam, another guy who you're not expecting a meteoric leap, I'm sure. Yeah. But you could conceivably expect him to outperform this year because he is a guy who relative to a lot of players is more tangibly in the gym relative to a lot of players has more tangibly added to his game he isn't sometimes you can expect like Terrence Ross for example is a guy who I think Terrence is 32 or 33 he from like age 29 started his impact started kind of going downhill pretty seriously and there hasn't been that much added to his game over time. Yeah. He isn't a guy you'd peg as like ages 31, 32, 33 could be really great. But some players, particularly guys who add a lot of skill to their game, do have really great 31, 32, 33 year old seasons. Pascal could definitely fit into that. But also the team context could be pretty harmful to what he's trying to do. We have points, assists, and true shooting percentage. Where do you sit on Pascal? My outlook on this his season with Fred being gone is that the overall counting stats will go up simply because I'm expecting usage to go up, but the overall efficiency will go down because of that the poor construction that they have. So overall prediction, I'm predicting 26 points a game, seven assists, a true shooting of 54%. I think the reasoning why his true shooting will go down is that he will probably – be shooting the most amount of pull-up jumpers in his career, at least from the mid-range, simply because he, Pascal Siakam against 95% of fours in the league, is going to get the first step. But he's going to be met by bigs on nearly every rotation, simply because Jakob, his, as Josh Codonera likes to say, his, his range is the rim. There, there isn't many other shooters ar- around the floor, and he is the the one row advantage creator on on the team. So I do expect him to take take more shots because al- although with Fred being gone, you would think the usage rises like um, sort of like unilaterally across the team. They, there isn't that many people on the team that have the requisite skills to take on that much usage. Ideally, Scotty is used more as a connector, more as a, a conduit of creating Darko's vision of offense. And OG is also taking advantage of the the creation that Pascal is creating and attacking tilted defenses using his strengths, which is cutting, getting to the rim, hitting spot up shots, thing things like that. And with Guys like Gary, who are probably better as the play finisher in the in these scenarios, there's only really Pascal as an option to take on the burden of carrying Fred's Fred's usage. So I expect him to have a career high in usage, career high in, in points, but the efficiency, overall efficiency, would go down just by the nature of the team. So I think we're coming at it opposites. Mm. I think that guys are going to get usage whether it's good or it's bad. Yeah. Like, I I think that the Raptors, you've made your bed. I don't, I don't think that they would run an offense. Now, certainly this is, we are cut down the middle. We did, we are looking at it differently. Um, 
one of us is going to be right and one of us is going to be wrong on this. I do wonder, like, it, I'd be pretty shocked if he was at, like, 26 points, 7 assists, just, like, huge, massive usage. If they're going to try and shift the offense, um, they have to get him a little bit down. Like, he he's a fairly large usage player already, yeah. as he deserves. I expect him to be around, like, similar or a little bit lower to last year. And I came in at 23.5 points, 6 assists, and 57% true shooting. And I think that the Raptors, as you say, where does that usage go and how much of it comes in the form of initiation? I think that the Raptors will have more catch and shoot stuff this season. And some of that will be Pascal Siakam. Like there has to be a mandate in that locker room. Like Pascal, if you catch above the break, yeah, you can style on him sometimes, but shots got to go up. And, you know, I think that's going to be part of his, his diet as well. But I think, yeah. 23.5, 23.5, six assists, 57% true shooting, which is a small uptick in usage. Yeah. I'm expecting some of that to be because of transition. And I'm expecting some of that to be a little less attempts um, to just try and create of nothing. Because I think the Raptors would be perfectly comfortable if it goes really well and it's a more democratized yeah. type of offense. Great. That means you're getting stuff out of guys you weren't expecting. Or maybe they are expecting, but is currently not seen by guys like you and I or or anybody who's been talking about the team really. And if it goes poorly, then I think they're perfectly fine being like, we're giving guys a shot. This is a team that's expensive and not doing very well, you know? I think that's where we disagree. I mm-hmm. I think... You're you know, like, they're all in. The, yeah, obviously, like, the team is different than last season. But you kind of saw that where they, in November and December, they tried to give Scotty more usage. And it maybe didn't, he takes it this year, <laughs> and it didn't necessarily work. And they were losing games. I just, I just have a hard time with the team that traded their first round pick for this upcoming season being okay with losing games. And I Some feel like gonna, I feel like they're going to try to win as much as possible, and that's giving Pascal the ball. Well, I can't wait. Like you <laughs> and I, yeah. we're glad people liked this podcast. We'll be doing it all next season. Yep. We will we will get to revisit this. I do wonder like what it looks like. If it is just like, hey, Pascal, go get buckets. I feel bad for the guy because <laughs> there's no space. Yeah. But Or maybe Pascal is like, hell yeah, I love pulling up from 14 feet nine times a game. Maybe that's how he loves to play basketball. I don't know. But yeah, interesting. Something else that factors into this. OG Ananobi's usage percentage. We didn't talk about points, rebounds, assists, nothing with OG. We're just talking usage, flat out. I'll go first. Go ahead. It was 19.5. It was 20. It's been hanging around there and below. I'm going 21%. This is the year he cracks it. Is it going to be everything people want it to be? Probably not. Is he going to do worse at some point? Things that some people thought, maybe. Is he going to be slightly better at some things? I think so. Is this the year where the pull-up finally comes around? God, I hope so, but probably not. But 21% usage rate. I don't know if that means he gets, you go back to like the 2021-22 approach of making sure he gets a bunch of touches in the post. I don't know if they let him, instead of moving the ball on, they say, okay, take more of those side pick and rolls, particularly empty side stuff, which taller passers and initiators have a big benefit in. Yeah. Um, shout out to Scotty. That'll probably be big for him as well. But then additionally, it's like if the Raptors are going to be a very, you know, a micromanaged offense because of the lack of spacing, then he's going to be so pivotal in every single, like, I don't know, play finishing type of like you have to be positioned here so that you know the gravity on the court sways this way you'll have a lot of shots coming your way maybe he just takes more shots because the team needs him shooting because not that many guys shoot it um i think the usage creeps up a little bit but maybe not exactly in the way that has been rumored that he's kind of looking for okay we we see it similarly um i'm predicting 22 percent usage increase um, a lot of that being a um, with the contract situation, 
you want him to explore the possibility of what a highest usage season would would look like. And also, I believe in order for this team to work, I I think they're going to try to stagger their their core of four guys as much as possible. And I do think he's going to get opportunities, especially with the bench, tr- with opportunities to initiate the offense and also um, in certain lineups where he is the primary option looking to actually score. And with the team being so constrained with shooting, I think a lot of possessions will end with him getting the ball, whether that's good or bad, at the end of the shot clock trying to trying to hit a shot because – when three of your guys can cannot score and the paint is packed, the 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 easier answer is kick out to the the only shooter on the on the court. So I I I I'm unsure if the usage will be good, but I'm sure the usage will go up. Two out of three were kind of in lockstep on. Very different opinions on Pascal's usage, though. We'll see. Very interesting. Yeah. Another guy who I think there's a big swing on, Precious Achua. Yeah. Now. I think the most illuminating is minutes per game and then slightly less points per game. So I'll go first on this one again. I'm going 23 minutes per game, which I think is on the high side considering the context of this team. Um, That means I think it's going to be good. And 10 points per game. I think he's going to crack the double digits. That is my earnest hope. And I think that to get to 23 minutes per game, he has to be a, a better version of himself than last season. He has to continuously outplay other guys and make a compelling case for why he should be the first big off the bench. Mm-hmm. And by proxy of this, I mean, other guys are going to, like their their minutes are going to go down. It's a very clogged front court. The Raptors are clearly waiting to see if somebody hits. Yeah. Like that's obviously what they're doing. They're trying to see if like, if Jalen McDaniels, who, as we talked about right after he got signed, should have immense, you know, defensive value, especially in the Raptors scheme. Uh, if he hits those corner threes that he's being requested to keep working on by the Raptors, then like, and he's great defensively, then he's going to crack minutes and he's going yeah. to make a compelling case. Um, that's a swing. If Otto Porter Jr. comes back and he's really good, he's going to play minutes at the three, of course. But if he really handles himself on the inside, maybe there's some stuff at the four. If there's stuff at the four, that means that Precious and Boucher and all this kind of stuff. Coloco season, there's just like a lot of room for wiggle. But 23 minutes per game, 10 points per game. And that'd be, that isn't the meteoric rise yeah. that some people want. Um, I think he's probably, you're looking at it as like a second contract star, if you believe in the star potential. Um I'll be doing a mailbag podcast where I talk about that a little bit, but yeah, 23 and, and 10. Yeah. Um, we're opposite on, on this as well. Nice. Sadly, I, I think his minutes don't change. So 20 minutes a game, um, slight increase in points, uh, nine points per game. Um, largest reason is obviously just the construction of the team. There's a log jam at the four spot. I, I'm of the opinion that he's more of a four than a five just due to the length. Like um, I spoke about this with our good friend S actually not too long ago, the, the, the shorter bigs that excel in the league, like the Draymond's, the Rob Wills have elite instincts as well as abnormal length. While I think he does have the instincts to play the five spot. He doesn't necessarily have the length to offer the Raptors, the opportunity to play a, a less aggressive style. With Precious on the floor, you have to deter people from getting to the rim because he doesn't have the necessary length to stop just block shots and, and make up for the mistakes of some of the other defenders. Where I think the season goes is that the minutes, I think the minutes shift more to Coloco than, than due to Precious. Sim- simply because offensively, I, I think Coloco will be a better play finisher just due to his his length and size. And with Precious taking the amount of threes that he does, I think it's difficult to have him on the floor with the lineup that he he that the Raptors will trot out because you can only have so many sub 30% shooters. Okay. 
This is interesting. Mm. Who do you think is a better finisher right now, Precious or Coloco? Precious. I, I've seen the I've seen the numbers. Precious, of course. Um, by a good deal, yeah. Yeah. What now, Coloco? On the way to a very successful career, especially yes. for a second round pick. The defensive stuff is there. I just did a podcast with Kenyon where we talked about Coloco, I think, for like 12 minutes and just like, hell yeah, Coloco, good for him. But what, what makes you expect better play finishing this upcoming season? Um, I, lo- I look back to a lot of the stuff in Arizona, and especially in in the tourney. He has the the movement skills to make the shots a lot a lot easier for him. Currently, last season, ter- terrible footwork, and he wasn't converting anything that that wasn't a, wasn't a dunk. Obviously, not even the dunks sometimes. <laughs> that is that is he, he had trouble. He, he had a lot of trouble. Yeah, he did. But I I think that skill set looks more like what it, what it was in college than it was last last season. Especially if he's going to be the sole big in a in a bench lineup with a OG and and Scotty, where the floor is the floor is more open, and ideally you're paying at a much faster pace, so that he will be able to get much easier opportunities. I man, if Coloco is really good, that's awesome because they need to get functional, important seven foot one players is good. Like we just watched Moses Brown up close and personal at summer league and you're going to get a certain level of impact play finishing blocks and like a little bit of you know impact on the glass guaranteed because of size but guys who you know they pair that size with like really good feel for the game and and movement that you know uh, helps their their ball handlers and helps their point of attack defenders it's like it's a really big deal if coloco pops that's awesome but i still yeah, I would be, I don't know, I guess it's like a good situation. The bad situation is if Coloco and Precious neither pops. Yeah. But the good situation is if they both pop and Precious with the higher amount of threes, you wonder if there's like a world where it's no longer Precious and Boucher, the Bash Bros, but it's like Precious and Coloco can play yeah. together. Um, I don't know if that's likely or super realistic, but I don't know. With young teams, you want to be able to sell yourself on potential and dream about what things can look like. So I think that would be fun. Um, two for two, divergent thinking. I like this. Maybe we, maybe we, Gary Trent Jr. Points per game, okay. Assists per game. I'll let you go first. I'm bullish on the Gary season. Okay. So eighteen points per game, two assists per okay, game. Okay, so you're not that bullish. Okay, two assists is amazing for him. He did it. Okay, I have things to say. I'm holding a candle lid, by the way. But um, I have things to say. 18 and 2, he did in 2021-22. Yeah, it was 18.5. So you can be fine. Like, you can be, I like Gary. Okay. You're not bullish. Better season than last. Better You're season. not bullish. <laughs> You're trying to sell yourself as, like, the, the guy who does the stocks. Like, I'm taking this. I believe in this stock, God damn it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, wait. Keep going. Okay. With how very rude of me. <laughs> with with Gary, I I see a big opportunity for him to be a great play play finisher for the Raptors. I think he's going to going to start in early in the season when his his shot finally is turned around. Him being paired next to Pascal, Pascal is the plus initiator. Bode well for his game. Him getting more more looks in the corner. And also with the type of movement I think Darko is going to play with, he's going to get more opportunities as a dribble handoff finisher. And I think those type of possessions will lead to him getting more assist opportunities. Because in those in those handoffs, he excelled in those um, despite lower volume. And I think with that uptick of volume, there's more opportunities with the tilt to defense for him to make very simple passes like a lob, a dump off pass where the big is able to convert very, very easily. For so, for me, go ahead. For me, I think Gary's game is perfectly fine the way it is. I would like to see the defense sort of live up to the the hype that the first season had, where he's I don't even need plus defense, where he's at a neutral level, where the gambles pay off, um, at a where the gambles pay off at a neutral level, where it's not hurting the the team, despite the box score maybe saying something else. 
you want him number four on the defensive player of the year ladder again? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> that was insane, man. I can't believe steals per game really has some people in a chokehold. Yeah. I do think, though, as you say about defense, with the defense behind him, if he truly is going to be the smallest player on the floor, and we keep saying, like, you know, across a couple podcasts, there's, like, top five defense potential for this lineup, um, the gambling and the protection for it should be like he, he'll have a shot at it. It's like a linebacker, right? Like a middle linebacker who who is protected by like a really great coverage. You, you get to be a little bit more dangerous with it. I went with 18 points per game, 2.4 assists per game. Um, for him, the way that his career has gone to tick back up in points per game is pretty meaningful. Mm-hmm. I think that even though his um, – even though his usage or like the way he got shots changed a lot from 2021 to 2022 and he had less points per game. I think that his process was way better. You and I, you and I have talked about that quite a bit. Um, I think he did. There's a reason why his two point percentage went up so much and the less dependable, like pull up numbers that certainly weren't sustainable for him in 2021, 22, they dropped off, but his overall efficiency stayed in a decent place because he was doing such a good job of playing off of the stars and using a couple extra dribbles here and there to get to a push shot. Um, I also think that they're going to lean harder into like the DHO stuff. Mm-hmm. And I've written articles and done studies on on Gar- film studies on Gary's passing. His best stretch of his career was like a two-week stretch with four assists per game. The bulk of those assists came out of dribble handoff looks. He's They're going to mine more of that with Scotty. They're going to mine more of that with Jakob. Both Scotty and Jakob are very capable finishers. I think that he's going to go up in assists, 2.4. It might not sound like a lot, but that would be pretty monumental for him. Um, I think he can do it. 18 and 2.4 would be a pretty, pretty great season for Gary, especially if he's protected by the defense. Could be fun. Um, Like many, Gary has, I understand, since when Fred, it seemed like Fred was coming back, I was like, I can't believe Gary opted in because everybody thought Fred was coming back. But now that Fred is gone, I'm like, oh, I get why Gary opted in. You know, like there's there's potential. There's a bit more usage coming his way. He can he can pump those numbers up a bit and maybe show something as far as like making reads that makes a team, whether it's the Raptors or or elsewhere extension free agency whatever it looks like there's um there's meat on the bone for him to improve and to kind of uh make himself a little bit more money because last season did not trend the way that he obviously wanted it to even though he was a better player last year than the year before um even if the numbers don't bear it out in all the ways that you would hope grady dick the rookie minutes per game and three point attempts per game I'm going to let you take the lead on this. Ask Chapo what he, what he thinks of it. Me and Chapo believe yeah. 25 minutes a game. Six threes. Wow. Is that bullish then? I guess that's bullish. That's high. That's bullish. I Whoa. I I I had Grady Dick as a top 10 pick in, in the draft. Yeah. I had him around six or seven. I think the level of shooting that he has is similar to Adrian Griffin. I think his shooting is actually better. So having that level of shooting that causes that much gravity with somebody who's able to put the ball on the floor, um, play make out of those, those possessions, offers so much value for a team like the Raptors that is lacking that. And also like the size profile that fits the aura of the team. I only see his minutes – trickling up as the season goes along especially with the motor that he showed that he has in summer league where he's going to rebound he's going to compete defensively and they have the requisite team to support him defensively he'll be guarding the worst um offensive player every single um possession so i think towards the second half of the season if he's not starting he's the first player off the bench hmm that would be awesome 25 uh, I'm glad you made the AJ Griffin comparison as far as like shooting talent. AJ is I don't he doesn't have as much uh, height. Yeah. Um, but he he has more pop off the dribble. AJ came in last season averaging three point six three point attempts per game. 
He also played 19.5 minutes per game. Um, and he started 12 games for Atlanta. And he was drafted 16th overall. Brady Dick drafted thir- 13th. Uh, I said 18 minutes per game, 4.3 attempts. That's I don't think that's a bad thing. That's not, that's I think a- like the Raptors, they have stuff to figure out. And this could, it could trend. And I've talked enough about Grady and how much I like Grady. I've written about Grady that I hope this isn't me being a pessimistic little, you know, worm online or anything, but just wondering 17 minutes per game, 4.3 attempts. That would be a lot of attempts. Like Gary, for example, I think was 6.8 attempts per game last season on like what, 31, 32 minutes per game. So 4.3 in 17 minutes is quite a lot. He's like getting them up. Um, but 17 minutes per game, I expect the physicality to be kind of tough for him Yeah, off the, cool. off the jump. I think that the Raptors at, you know, this is where it could swing. If they are like, we got to win, 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 win. There's no sunk cost fallacy with that draft pick. Um, Dennis Schroeder is going to come off the bench before Grady for a while, probably. Um, and you know, there's a couple other players like Otto Porter Jr. who is, you know, is is Grady going to have a better career shooting the ball than Otto? He certainly could. But right now, a guy who can like dependably finish plays, maybe Otto has a better year than Grady. I'm not sure. Um, Grady could get bumped down the rotation. He could also vault up it. There's a, a wide range of outcomes, I think, for Grady. I like that we here represent the really great outcome. I think like 25 and... What do you say? Six attempts per game. Yeah, that's like, man. If we're in that range, I think that's like a, an awesome, awesome rookie year. And uh, seventeen and four point three attempts, I think, is like okay. That's not a, uh, that's not a referendum on his potential or anything like that. But yeah. that's like an okay outcome. Um, we have the okay and like elite outcome covered. Um, yeah, I think that's like. I'm fine with either of the either of those for Grady, but if he's playing 25 a game, which means he's you know rookies always start out except for like Scotty for example, but rookies always start out, I don't know, like coming off the bench like 12, yeah, 12, 15. That means he's playing like 31, 32 towards the back end of the season probably. Yeah, that would be great because that means he's gotten into a starting lineup that already has like a ton, ton, ton of NBA talent in it. He beat out a guy. Especially since the Raptors, I know who's he beating out. Gary, that'd be pretty. Like if you beat out Gary, that'd be gnarly. Yeah, he, he'd be having an awesome season. Yeah, there's also a scenario like the season doesn't go the way that they want, and then Gary gets sure. moved, and he's bumped up, and they're playing more minutes because they don't care about where the pick lands, or they're trying or, to the top six, or somebody else could get moved too, and then yeah. it's yeah, yep. That's certainly we have we have the range. I think yeah, the range of outcomes. For anybody listening, um, if it's the podcast, you can't really comment down below unless you're on the website. But in the YouTube channel, um, let us know your predictions because that's predictions are the best because there's like a wide range of outcomes. I'm sure somebody expects Scotty to get to like 22 points per game this upcoming season. Um, you know, 100%. well, I don't think that'll happen. I'm sure some people do. That would be man if Scotty did 22 points, I'd be like beating my chest like wow good for this guy yeah, I'd be real proud of him. Season. yeah he that would be incredible if he was like doing like 22 and 7 that'd yeah. be remarkable um but yeah those are the predictions that's what we think i hope i hope that people enjoyed it any parting shots trey for the listener um i think our our last podcast was a a bit bleak on the outlook that we we had so i'm i'm hoping some of the predictions we had today offer some optimism that's that was something I wanted to do was I think it's my job for what it's worth. It's my job to look at the film and the players honestly and give my perspective. Yes. And I do so respectfully. So I have no qualms about being, you know, doing like pessimism or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I've done enough of it. You yeah. know, the way the season ended, I wrote enough about what went wrong I wrote enough about the approach at free agency. I wrote enough about the current roster context, talked about it enough. We talked about it enough. We even talked about like the summer league roster being like really underwhelming. A bunch of stuff was underwhelming and not going so well. 
We did that coverage. It's out there. Sober analysis, whatever. But there is stuff to look at and to be like excited and hopeful about for this team. And a lot of the conversations I've been having lately and the pieces I will write will reflect more of that, I think. So for the people who are less into it for like the analysis and you kind of want to hear some more positive things, truthful, again, positive things, then there's more of that upcoming. And Trey, you, you might be doing some of these podcasts while I'm gone too. So ah, that's true. If there's anything monumental happening, you will you will see a, a Samson Folkless pull of Trey podcast. I thought you were saying one a week. That's what the 360 deal said. <laughs> Not like that. Folk Productions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> a Shug Knight over here, surely. <laughs> um, Trey, party shots. You got anything to say to get out of here? Um, I guess if this is our last podcast of the summer, it's been an awesome season. We got to go to the Summer League. We We got to cover my favorite, my childhood team for it, this started as a joke we've done probably i want to say like we had to have done at least 20 episodes yeah we had to have oh i way over 20 maybe yeah. we did we were doing two a month yeah for a while and then we we're doing one a week for like what four months we've yeah. done well over 20 okay then we've done well over 20 but yeah, yeah. This is, it's been an awesome season i'm looking forward to next year and it's been a blessing to to work with you Hey, hey, brother! <laughs> all, all, all the, all the stuff goes your way. Um, I, I got, I did an interview with Nigel that I'm sure will be out, but I got sappy enough about you on there. So oh. if anybody wants, if anybody wants that, they can just go listen to that. But okay, listener, thanks for tuning in, in with us. I guess yeah, like we'll be back in September. Yeah, I suppose it should. It won't be that long, truthfully. And Trey, he's doing one a week without me, so all that good stuff. Um, so it won't seem like I'm gone, really. And, like, you know, I'm just, like, a sports podcaster. I'm a schlub. So who really cares if I'm gone for a few weeks? Regardless, thanks for tuning in. It's been a blast speaking to everybody. Trey, thank you. Listener, thank you. And whether you got into this in the morning or at night, have a blessed day and goodbye. <laughs>